All right, we're outside again, and today I want to make for you a, um, I've got two recipes I really want to do today. The first one is a tomato sauce, and I really, or pomodori, as my Italian friends would say, my Italian relatives would say, um, tomato sauce. However, today I'm going to add a couple of members of the nightshade family, which tomatoes are part of, the eggplant. I've got a, the beautiful little, um, fairy tale eggplant and I also have some of the green eggplant now these come from my garden they're absolutely incredible it's a very simple tomato sauce one that I love and it's I always think of the story when I was in um, Pisa years ago and I asked for a marinara sauce and the little Italian guy in Pisa pops in the back of the head just goes you mean pomodoro uh, that just every time I make tomato sauces I think of that story and remember tomato sauce uh, red sauces there are as many available as there are people on the planet. So we all can make them a little different. Uh, as long as you like the taste, that's what I want you to, to think about. So we're gonna start with um, a couple of things I wanna show you. I've got some of my frozen tomatoes from my garden a couple of years ago or last season, right? I've got those and I'm also gonna use um, some diced canned tomatoes. There's nothing wrong with canned tomatoes. Really, I, I don't want people to be culinary shamed don't be ashamed uh, beautiful tomatoes nowadays they're the italian um the san Giovese, that san marciano tomato comes over in the can so feel free to use those in fact i'm going to get some of the tomato paste the san marciano tomato paste to add to this a little later ingredients for this sauce okay i'm going to use an onion my eggplant i've shared with you already one of the keys 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 to make it a good <laughs> sauce gravy if you will is that oil i'm going to use a nice olive oil here i'm going to be extremely liberal in that uh, i've got some i don't know if you can see that at home i've got some dry oregano salt well that's pepper of course and then salt and towards the end i'm going to add some fresh basilico some fresh basil came from my garden right out back there oh something else i want to share with you i've got about um a teaspoon of brown sugar okay we're going to offset that acid in all those tomatoes that we're using we're going to start with uh with our onion um again safety i've got my little uh paper towel underneath to keep that lock that cutting board down um and i've got a little box to my left for uh the rubbish or garbage as we say here in the states and um no secret just chop the onion up as best any way you see okay i want to a fine chop on this because I really want the vegetables in my marinara, in my pomodoro, in my tomato sauce. <laughs> I'm going to use all the names I know for a red sauce so that I never get popped in the head again by a beautiful little Italian guy in Pisa or Naples, Nepali. Okay, so I'm just peeling that onion. I'm, I'm taking that top layer off, a little Spanish onion there. Take your time. Have fun with your food. Marinara sauce is one that, uh, or tomato sauce, pomodoro sauce, is one that um, I think the kids will really love. Now, um, move this out of the way, we'll get a little working space there. I want to cut these pieces as small as I can, okay? Just little little dices there, okay? Again, the onion has been peeled, sliced in half, okay, on the bias, okay? Or, um, and we're just gonna run our knife straight down. I think I've showed you this several times. And now, and then you can just get nice fine dices like that. Let's go ahead and add some olive oil to our saute pan i'm going to start to heat that up and it is a little windy out here today so what i may do is start the marinara here move it inside let it cook while we get everything else prepped up and we'll start to when we start to make those meatballs mm, meatballs i love meatballs you know when i was a kid i never was a big fan of spaghetti and meatballs however i loved meatball sandwiches so mom would make the spaghetti and the meatballs, and uh, I would uh, toast some bread. Again, be very liberal with that olive oil, because that really, really helps those uh, members of the nightshade family sing, 
in the pan. Got a minute or two to, to heat up. Got my bash and chopper here to scoop things off the, uh, the cutting board easily. Mm, I do enjoy cooking outside, so to bring this kitchen outside, I just love that. I'll get that sizzle going. And I have washed the eggplant. So all I have to do now is trim and dice it. And as I said, I do have a little container to my left, your right, for rubbish. And then all that stuff can go into my mulch pile and help to fertilize the beds, feed the beds next season. Okay, we'll let those onions cook. And again, they're going to cook down in the sauce. I don't want you to, don't fret. Never fear. We're going to cook this slowly and beautifully. Okay, so I've got the, uh, those nice little fairy tale eggplant. I'm just cutting the tops out, the, um, the stem end off. Goes into our rubbish pile. And because I have so many of these, I'm really not um, concerned about waste. I mean, I grew these, so the food cost on that is, what, 50 cent for the package of seeds or that I, that I bought. And just cut them up any way that works for you. I want small pieces with this, this eggplant because I want them to, to, to just disappear in our sauce, in our gravy. No matter if you dice, slice, just get really small pieces. The same we're going to do with the, uh, with the green eggplant. Participation kind of demo. Now come over here and take a look in the pan here. I'm going to see how our onions are looking. They've been cooking about three, four minutes, right, as we chop those. Beautiful. But it can cook just a little longer. I'm also going to add some more olive oil to that. I really want that olive oil to um, be present. I want all that flavor. Now look at that. That may seem like a lot of oil, but folks, it's not. Okay. We'll get these going. Let's get our bash and chop. Add our diced eggplant here. I'm going to add my first bit of seasoning. I'm going to add some salt to these just to help bring that uh, the liquid out. This is an incredible marinara. If you don't believe me, ask Lisa. I prepared this for her the other day, and she just went crazy over it. Mm. All right, this is going to go on for a sec. Now let's get our green eggplant in the pan. Okay, taking the stem end off. We're going to slice through the middle. Yeah, I'm noticing this table shakes quite a bit, so forgive me, y'all. Will I will rectify that when we next time we um, are cooking outside, or I may just stop pressing so hard on the um, tabletop. How does that sound to you? Hmm? That work, that'll work too. Again, I want small pieces. This green eggplant, um, I found this, these seeds um, at a little store, I think in the city. I was at a, an Asian market down in Chinatown and I saw the green eggplant. I go, this is gorgeous. So I took some home and, and um, sprouted them. And we grew them this season. At some point, I'll go over and show you a picture of that. It, it's over my, over my left shoulder back there. I've got a couple of um, wild tomatoes that came up. Well, I shouldn't say wild. They came up from last season. Um, they actually produced a couple of small tomatoes for me. Going to add those in. Now it's time for that first bit of seasoning, a little salt. Some pepper, a little more pepper, and we're going to add the oregano, some oregano. And remember, you can always add more. Because I'm using dry oregano, I'm going to add this in sooner. If it was fresh oregano, I'd add it towards the end, okay? So we're going to turn that over, place the lid on. I'm going to add more olive oil. We'll come back and take a look at this un momento for when we're ready, when we're ready to put the... Um, Add the tomatoes, okay? Tomatoes. Gonna put the lid, place the lid back on so that uh, all that moisture will stay inside and help to cook those veggies 
Okay. Mmm. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all that liquid. That's just that flavor in your in your vegetables. So I don't want to lose that. That's why I place a lid on the pan. And then cooking in these beautiful ceramic pans, it also requires if you are worried about how much oil or fat that you're cooking with, you can use less in these, these with these beautiful ceramic or non-stick type of pans. Now look how that's cooking down. Oh, it's gorgeous. Going to add our tomatoes. And it really doesn't matter which order you go, whether it's the frozen or the, um, the canned tomatoes. I think I'm going to just put the canned ones in. So I'm sorry, the frozen ones. I'm thinking, I'm uh, thinking one thing and saying another. Now these are those frozen tomatoes and all that liquid, all that juice that's from the tomatoes um, that we froze. I don't want to lose that, so I'm going to take it and add these in. Just the juice and all. Let it flop out on me. And as the sauce cooks, you can pull those. Uh, you see how we can just pull the skins right off like that? Never fear, Curtis has got a tip or two, my dear. <laughs> mm. Is there a Stevie song, Wonder Song with the my dear? I'm trying to think of, hmm, my dear. Oh, there's a Marvin Gaye song. There's a Marvin Gaye song, my dear. Here, my dear. Mm. I guess you can just take all those skins off. Now, personally, I don't mind tomato skins in my sauces. However, you know, if you don't want to uh, have them in there, that's an easy way to do it careful don't burn yourself in that hot liquid so kids i want you to let mom and dad or whoever's helping you prepare the meal do that oh i also brought out a wooden spoon during the interlude there and again the way i put these tomatoes away i simply wash them slice them in half or just cord them i sometimes i didn't even slice them i just put the whole tomato in the bag and they froze like that. Look at that. See, all that beautiful tomato. The skin just comes right off and all that beautiful tomato meat. Tomato goodness is right in there. Okay. I think I've done a couple of episodes where I showed you ways of peeling tomatoes. And I think I talk about this whenever I use frozen tomatoes. My, my homegrown frozen tomatoes, how easy it is to just take those skins off. You see it in action right there. That same principle that works when you are... You know, you slice the top, just put a little V-cut in the top. Works here because um, the tomatoes are shrinking down after they de as they defrost. So the skins just stay plump and you can pull them right off. Maybe a little more information than you needed today. <laughs> um, now, these are melting nicely. They're finishing defrosting. So I'm going to let them cook. Mm. Mm, well, you know, we can go ahead and add the... Add the um, we can add the canned tomatoes, then we'll, take, we'll let it reduce. I'm going to take it inside and let it cook two to three hours. I want this to really cook down and reduce. Um, I was working with some nutritionists years ago, and they talked to me about how, like, using canned tomatoes, there's, a, um, there's an, a protein or something that's released as they're in the can. I've got to check with my nutri nutritionist friends to, to make sure I don't say this wrong, um, how... The canned tomatoes are really good for you, and all, as well as canned beans. There's something that happens in that processing that really helps uh, the nutrition come out in those tomatoes. And if I'm speaking wrong, I will correct myself on this. Um, I worked with some great dietitians and nutritionists over the years when I was working with Novo Nordisk. Uh, let's add back or add some more because I can't take it out and add it back. We're going to add more oregano. I'm going to add that brown sugar. And I know this from just years of making sauces. About a teaspoon is plenty of sugar to offset that um, acid in tomatoes and not make the tomato sauce too sweet. Um, there's a couple more things we need to add to this. One being the um, those wonderful the tomato paste. Then I'm going to add to that now. You see how runny that is? We're going to allow this to reduce. So this will cook at least two hours. In the meantime, we will get things together for our meat balls. Again, it's take... time to make our meat balls. I hope uh, you love my first rose cut of the the new yard. Um, 
Oh, this smells beautiful. Anyway, I'll take that in for Lisa. She's been working her tail off today while I'm out here cooking in the yard. Uh, meatballs. And I showed you the San Marziano uh, paste that we used um, in the tomato sauce. I'll bring that out, the pomodoro sauce. I'll bring that out a little later when we get the meatballs made. Ingredients for our meatballs. Um, it's pretty cool, okay? I remember now, I am always talk to you about safety in the kitchen, especially if you're cooking outside. What I've done is I've got our um, ingredients, the meat items, on a bed of ice, okay? I've got a pound of ground beef, and the ratio is you know, two to one. So one pound of ground beef, half a pound of pork, and half a pound of veal. That's what I'm gonna use for this meatball. Remember, you can make meatballs with any kind of meat, lamb, turkey, chicken, whatever, okay? I like this combination. And then I've got some, um, the, some um, uh, veal and pork left over that I will probably make some burgers with those, that two combo, because again, I had to buy a pound of each, right? And I've got a, two eggs, okay? And I'm going to use some uh, Parmesan cheese, grated Parmesan cheese. Uh, well, that's more, you know, really, really fine grated. Salt and pepper. And I'm going to add a bit of Worcestershire sauce, W sauce. I love what Worcestershire sauce does. All right. As I was saying, food safety gloves go on. And remember, whenever handling those meat items, we want to make sure those are there. <laughs> those are there. Nice combo here, Curtis. Uh, so we're going to add our beef. That's our base, right? Beef. I'm going to set that off to the side. I absolutely do love cooking outside like this. I'm going to add our veal and pork. Doesn't really matter which order in which they go. Um, that was the veal. This is the pork. Half a pound to a pound, right? Now, notice I've got my ice bath. I'm going to, because we're working outside, and again, it's always about that food safety. Let's go ahead and put that meat back on that ice bath. And a little tip two, uh, tip two, two tip. <laughs> um, go ahead and place your, your bowl that you're going to be mixing in. Before, if you know you're going to be working outside, go ahead and place the bowl in the fridge and get it nice and cold, and that will also help. Now, I'm going to add our two eggs. Maybe I need a larger bowl, though, huh? And we're going to add our um, Worcestershire W sauce here. And a couple of big shakes, boom, 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 and salt, pepper. I haven't put the right uh, hand glove on yet. Salt, pepper, and if you want to add other seasonings to your to your meatloaf, you can. Did I say meatloaf? Your meatballs, okay? And pepper. Sprinkle that pepper in there. Okay. Now we're going to add um, my grated parm here. I may switch this out for a larger bowl, everyone, so don't be, don't go, well, Curtis, no continuity. I'm letting you know ahead of time that I may get a bowl. Now, I'm going to show you another little trick that I do. Right here, I've got flour, just uh, all-purpose flour. And as I make my meatballs, I'm going to roll them lightly in the um, flour. Why? Well, it's that chemistry of cooking. Think about when you're making a roux. What you hope we're outside, so there's a, a th that sounds like a fire truck, so hopefully everyone's safe. Um, that's what happens when you work outside, right? Um, so the chemistry of cooking, that, that flour, when you're making roux, you cook that flour, right? And it helps to thicken that roux up. So what I do when making my, my meatballs is I add the Parmesan cheese, I add the egg, two eggs there. Those help to bind it really well inside. And that uh, when I roll it in that flour, it helps that gravy, <laughs> that marinara, that pomodori, that tomato sauce really thicken up nicely and it has such a beautiful color to it. Whoa, that, that's coming close, y'all. Is he coming our way or she coming our way or, or head in the other direction? Now, I've got my gloves on. So let's go ahead and start to mix our eggs, meat, everything, you know. Just turn it over now. There we go. We're going to make our meatballs, and I'm going to cook these. I've got um, some olive oil. Yeah, I need a larger bowl, everyone. So, hey, sweetheart, how you doing in there? Um, oh, no, I can make this work. I was going to ask her to bring one out, but she got her um, booster shot yesterday. I don't think she's feeling so great, so I don't think I want to make her come out here and... Um, 
So let's just mix this up. Yeah. I want to make sure the ground beef, the pork, and veal gets a nice blend. I don't want to have just one a clump of like veal or a clump of beef or a clump of pork. So just take your time. This into a, it's not that, that it's a larger bowl, it has a wider top. So we get a chance to really mix those, um, those meats, those trio, the trio of meats that we have here. Put this off to the side. And there we go, we got our ice bath. Oh, look at that, see, that's so much, that's so much better to mix. And I'm trying not to overwork it. I just want to kind of incorporate everything while that oil is heating up. Um, personally, I like smaller meatballs. They cook quicker, and I get feel like I get to have more on my uh, on my uh, meatball sub or meatball sandwich. So again, that's your preference. My oil is starting to there's a nice little sheen coming on there, and I smell it heating up. I'm gonna turn this off just for a second because we've got it hot. And we'll get everything uh, together here before we drop our first meatballs in. Let me make sure I get that egg incorporated in there. I'm going to add a little more parm. Let's add all that parm in there. And remember, if you want recipes, you can write the station's uh, CMC TV down in San Rafael. Those of you who live don't live in Novato. If you live here in Novato, you can send a letter to... Um, NC TV, or you can just go to my website, curtisakins.net. Chef at Curtis Akins is the place to look for recipes. Just say, hey, chef, post that recipe or send it to me, okay? We will do that for you. All right, now, the meat is looking really good. I've got my fresh basil that's going to go into our, our, um, to our sandwiches. Let's get this back on. Nice and hot. I'm going to remove the lid. We'll make our first meatball. These are not spicy meatballs. These are Curtis's meatballs. Just wanted to make some space so you can see everything, okay? Now I've got my flour there. And again, I like smaller meatballs, so you can make yours whatever size you like. I'm going to roll them. And I don't want to make them too tight. And it's not like you have to get the whole thing covered. Just a little flour would do. Personally, not, I like mine even smaller than that. So let's go. Oh, can you? It's frying already. I'm gonna make up our meatballs. I love the smell of that olive oil in there. So I just want a little flour so we can add it to the um, pomodori sauce. It thickens it up. And once these are done, we're going to brown these up. We'll bring the sauce out. Let's just go ahead and speed this up so that you can uh, see me make these meatballs in super fast. I like doing this. Um, remember, just roll them to the size you like. And... Um, the smaller they are, the quicker they cook. So if you've got to feed a whole bunch of people, make small meatballs. Uh, also, the food safety gloves. It allows me to work in the pan a little bit without really burning myself. Now, please don't submerge your hand deep down in the oil with those food safety gloves on. However, they do allow you to, to work within the pan. You see that? The little finger that I'm moving around and not burning myself. Have fun in the kitchen. Be safe. We're back in the great outdoors. Look at that sauce. How it's how it's really thickened up. You see how the reduction from the top down to there makes that gravy just nice and beautiful. Our um, meatballs, oh, they brown beautifully, y'all. Oh, I'm a happy man. I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I brought my thermometer out so you can do a quick read inside. That temperature is 165, 175, 176. Okay, so these are done. That's the largest of the meatballs. I always check the largest one. And they can finish cooking inside the sauce, so don't sweat that, all right? I've got a different thermometer. I've got 
couple of these and I'm starting to really love working with all these different electronic thermometers. So try them out as far as keeping temperature. Now we, we remember we're going to add some basilico, some fresh basil to our to our pom uh, pomodori sauce at the end. So I'm just going to tear a few leaves off and you can always add more. Oh, that one just jumped out of my hand, so it's right in there okay, already. I'm going to turn the sauce down even farther, even lower. I'm going to go ahead and turn the meatballs off. Then we will start to transfer them into the sauce. And they'll be in the sauce until you're ready to serve them. Okay? Um, I, usually, I usually allow them to be in the sauce mm, at least half an hour. You know? I may add more basil to, basil to that, okay? Doesn't that gravy look good? Oh. Okay, let's go ahead and speed it up. We're gonna transfer our meatballs that are cooked into the sauce, and they can be in there, like I said, 30 minutes or more. Just let them get nice and flavored up. Enjoy, bon appetit. Ooh, here we are, y'all. It is time to taste everything up. Um, what I did was I took and toasted just a hot dog bun. A little garlic uh, butter underneath with some Parmesan cheese. And uh, let's go ahead and make our hero. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, you can still see the steam coming off of that. Let me raise it up so we get, a, get it from the big camera. I got a close up over there, my number two cam. Let's go ahead and make our hoagie or our, um, what do we want to call this? What I like to do is put a little sauce down on my bread for before I put my uh, before I put the meat on my meatball. And I left the parm inside, so I'm not gonna be able to top it with parm, but that's okay. I got it underneath it. And I really like it just all over the place. Ugh. Just be a messy, a messy meatball sandwich, huh? Mmm. Look at that. Uno, dos, tres, or how do you count in? Uh, Italiano, huh? Okay. Huh? De, well, that's French. Mm, wow, these look so good. All right, they're bigger than I thought, so I'm going to go ahead. What do you think, huh? Isn't that a pretty sandwich? Oh, and it smells pretty, too. Ooh, la, la. Let's take a bite. First, I'll taste our pomodori sauce. Let's go for the meatball, huh? This is not a spicy meatball. This is just a gorgeous, tasty. Oh, it smells like heaven coming out of them. Mmm. 